Hello everyone, it's Marcel Gagne and welcome to another Cooking with Linux episode. This one is going to have to do with a package called Red Hat Data Monitoring, aka Hocular. And uh, I want to uh, just uh, give you a little introduction that starts with Jurassic Park. You remember that scene at Jurassic Park where the kids have to stand perfectly still so the T-Rex doesn't see them? Well, I have bad news for you. See, see, the, you know, the kids have to stand perfectly still. There we go. There's the kids standing perfectly still. Anyway, the bad news is that the T-Rex would have eaten the kids because the T-Rex actually had great eyesight. In fact, we use a term called hawk-eyed to give you, uh, you know, because hawks can see really, really well. Well, it turns out that a T-Rex probably would have seen even better than a hawk. So the kids would have been toast. I'm sorry to tell you that. Anyway, that is where the, uh, the project Hocular gets its inspiration. The idea being that when you're in a modern data center, you can generate massive amounts of information, and that comes in terms of logs, system metrics, all sorts of things. Um, and you've got all these systems across the internet and on the cloud generating all sorts of information. If you're a systems administrator, you're trying to go through all that stuff. It's really, really, really hard. So the idea is that you've got a package, in this case called Hocular, whose job, because it's a Hocular, with an ocular. Anyway, Hocular lets you zoom in, narrow in on those little tiny bits and pieces of information that are really important so that you can get your work done. So anyways, that's the short version of it. Now, Hocular uses a database called Cassandra. Now, Cassandra is a NoSQL database, and uh, they chose it because it's high availability, ridiculously fast, it works across clusters. Anyway, you cannot run Hocular, this this uh, data monitoring tool, without first installing Cassandra. So the first thing you're going to have to do is go over to the Cassandra project on GitHub. And that's github.com, P-C-M-A-N-U-S slash C-C-M. You can also go directly to the Cassandra website, which is cassandra.apache.org, because Cassandra is an Apache project. So let's just clone or download this thing. We're going to download the zip, the latest Cassandra stuff, and we are going to do No, just save it. We're going to save it in this case. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to go over to Hocular. And on Hocular, you can follow to the GitHub page there as well and download the latest Hocular services. And I'm going to do that as well over here. So there we go. Hocular services. And yes, I do want to save that file. So we're going to save that, download it, and uh, just before we actually go into it and you're sitting there going, why do I want to do this? Well, you're going to do it so that you can get a really nice, clear picture of what's happening on your system because Hocular lets you set up all these wonderful little metrics like graphical things and gauges and, you know, and alerts. And the sort of alerts we're talking about are things where you can send an email out to a group of people or if something is really, really, really urgent, you can even fire out an SMS to somebody's mobile device who happens to be on call. So that's what we're looking to do. We're setting up this environment to be able to do all these wonderful things. And so we have downloaded CCM, the Cassandra uh, database system, and we have downloaded the Hocular services. So let's go and see how we install this stuff. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the downloads folder because that's theoretically where all this stuff is. Hey, amazing. There it is. It's all down here. All right, and now we have both our packages downloaded, the CCM package as well as the Hocular package. So what we're going to do is we're going to unzip CCM master for starters, and then we're going to get into the CCM folder. Now, I'm going to I'm going to right up front tell you that you should be very careful not to install this with root, okay? So use this as a regular user, which is what I'm doing at the moment, okay? So CCM, uh, create. We're going to create a Hocular database, okay? Hocular... Hocular, and we're going to say version. What version this we want to run? 3.0.9. Why am I doing 3.0.9? Well, 3.7 actually is the most recent incarnation of this, but for some strange reason, this did not work when I did my initial tests. So I downgraded to an earlier stable version, and uh, and it worked just fine. So anyway, uh, when you try this, uh, 3.7 may work just fine for you. So I'm just going to let it ride there for the moment. Here we go. We do this, and... We watch for a minute while it downloads, builds all the necessary components. Now, all this stuff, by the way, is built on uh, uh, on Java. So I did not mention this at the beginning, but you are going to need a Java environment, which most you know Linux server installations are going to have anyway. But you're going to need that to be able to run Hocular and so forth. So I just want to mention that now, even though it seems late in the process. So once this is all done, you're going to get that 100% thing happening, and then we are going to get this thing ready to start so that we can get get on with, so CCM, or get on with the Hocular part of the installation. Update, conf, 
uh, and we're going to say start with RPC services. So start RPC uh, colon T R U E, and there we go. And then we go dot slash CCM. Whoops, CM start and. Well, we're not expecting the number of processors to increase at the moment. So we're going to leave this the way that it is and continue on with the rest of the operation. So CD dot dot. And now we're going to extract the other part of the system, which is the Hocular install. So TAR dash XZVF Hocular. And do, 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 do. All right, now that we've got Hocular services extracted, let's take a look in the folder and there's the bin folder. I'm just gonna go bin slash standalone. And the reason I'm doing that uh, is to fire it up all by itself. And there are a few things that we need to do beyond this, but I just wanna show you what happens at this point. So the whole environment starts up, JBoss bootstrap environment, lots and lots of messages are gonna go flying down the screen here. And of course there are all sorts of things that haven't been yet configured, but we'll get to that in a moment. So. Just want to show you all the various things starting up. And if we go over to our web browser here, and we're going to change this from hocular.org to localhost colon 8080. And if we've done everything right, we should see the welcome to Hocular screen. And you'll notice that down here, all our services are listed. Hocular services, Hocular metrics, Hocular alerts, Hocular inventory, uh, are all just unavailable or starting at this moment. So we will wait while all these things happen. Now we have Hocular services running, and now we have Hocular inventory running. And you'll notice that metrics and alert are not available at this moment. So let's jump out and continue with this. And the first thing we're going to do is I'm just going to stop this before we continue. All right, now as you saw with the status indicator show that only two things are working. So we only have a partially working system. You're going to need to create one or more user to access the Hocular services. And there's a shell script in the bin folder to be able to do that. And if you go bin add, whoops, vin, ha, bin add user dot sh, and we're going to say dash a, dash u, and dash u is the username. And uh, let's see, uh, we're going to just call this one, we're going to make it simple, my user and dash p for the password and we're just going to call whoops we're going to call this one my pass now obviously you're going to want to use something different than that dash g read and we're going to make this read write uh and read only uh, read only now different users are going to have different permissions but this is what we're setting up at the moment all right so there we go we've set up one user we are ready to go now on the web interface if we go back to the web interface and that means that obviously we need to restart hocular hocular services are running hocular inventory is running and now we're going to go over here and see there says wildfly agent installer that is the agent that you see up there the uh, hocular agent so we are going to click Wildfly, and this is the username and password that you just created, all right? So, my user, my pass, okay. And now, it wants you to download and save this thing. So yes, we're gonna download and save this thing. So click save file. Now, the file that you just downloaded is actually in the uh, in the standalone, so SLS standalone. I'm going to show you where that is sitting. Configuration folder. You see it there? Hocular Wildfly Agent Installer Jar. So, Java dash jar standalone configuration. Hocular, whoops, Hocular Wildfly Agent Installer dot jar dash dash username. And guess what that is? That is the username that you created, my user, dash dash password. And that is the password that you created for that user, my pass, dash dash server dash URL. And of course we're running a local host here. So HTTP colon slash slash local host colon 8080. All right, here we go. Let the magic happen. And that's it. It is installed right there. So, all right. So now we've got, uh, we've, we're back at the start. We are going to just check on a couple of things. We're going to go over to CCM and now the first thing we're going to do is make sure that uh, the uh, Cassandra 
uh, database is actually up and running. So we're going to go dot slash CCM status. And uh, there it is, Hocular, one node, and it is up and running. So let's go back to Hocular Services. And I'm going to cheat here because this is a long thing to type out, but I'm just going to... I'm just going to go back to where I've got it sitting in my history here. Bin standalone.sh, a little bit different than before because I am now passing all the authentication information and I'm telling it that the uh, agent is now enabled uh, because theoretically everything is installed. So we're going to find out if this works or not, all right? All right, so basically we're passing hocular, uh, rest user, which is the user who created the password, my pass. Obviously, you're going to come up with something more intelligent than my user and my pass. And away we go. Let's let this magic happen. And uh, lots of Java messages and things are going to go flying past our screen here. And I'm just going to switch over to the... Um, to the Firefox Hocular page here, and we're going to wait and see as things start. Now, I'm not really very patient, so I'm going to hit the uh, I'm going to hit the reload button on the current page. It will actually, you know, check on its own here. But there we go, Hocular Services, unavailable or starting. Well, you know what? It is actually starting, uh, as we can see in the background there. Lots and lots of things starting in the background. And oh, there we go, Hocular Services running. That's one of four. Wait a little bit more. Oh, now a Hocular Inventory. We've seen this before, though, running. Two of four. Three of four as Hocular Alerts are up and running. We only have one more thing to make sure that it's up and running, and that is our Hocular Metrics. And let's see if that magically comes up. There it is. Okay, and... There's obviously a lot more to this package than what I'm showing you here. This is just an introduction. I wanted to show you how to get things set up and running and to have the services all available. Um, but obviously, we're going to have to dig a lot deeper into this. But this is just a quick introduction. This is how you set up and or how you install and how you set up Hocular uh, uh, for, on in this case, on a CentOS 7 system. And that's where I'm going to leave it for now. This is Marcel Gagné signing off.